Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this video we'll be doing the review for the TP-Link Archer C20i which is a dual band Wi-Fi router supporting even the AC band. It's also known as the AC750 and this is essentially a dual band Wi-Fi router comprising of 2.4 GHz band as well as the 5 GHz AC band. And the great thing about this device is generally Wi-Fi AC devices are pretty expensive but this device is actually pretty affordable and this sells in India for around 2500 rupees and it's available on Flipkart. That's just around 40 odd US dollars. And and this is the product itself. Let me actually show you the features of this product. So this is the TP-Link Archer C20i router and it's actually pretty small in size compared to many other dual band Wi-Fi routers. And uh, we have this glossy plastic which is I'm not a big fan of. It's a fingerprint magnet and we just have the TP-Link branding and these are the LED lights. I'll show you these uh, when I switch it on but one thing I noticed is that uh, these uh, lights do not blink when there is any activity so they just stay on if your wi-fi connection is on or if you are connected to the internet they don't blink when there is any activity moving towards the back we have uh, this design and on the back we have the regular ports this is for the power power adapter goes in and this is the van port where your internet connection would go this is not an adsl router your internet connection via the ethernet port will go over here and we have four ethernet ports and these are all 100 uh, megabit port this is not a gigabit router but again considering the price point i would say it is okay and on this side we have nothing but if we move on this side we have the usb port we also have the wps button and the wireless on off switch and a physical power on off button another good thing is that i also did test the wps functionality of this router by connecting it to a wi-fi repeater and it worked actually pretty well now if we move to the USB port, you can connect pen drives and portable hard drives to this router and it can act like a local network storage and I did test it with this thumb drive and I would say the performance was pretty decent. The good thing is that it also has a media server. So for DLNA enabled device, you can just load up your movies, etc. And they will be visible to the entire network. But in terms of raw uh, transfer speeds via the USB, it was very average at around between 4 to 4.5 megabyte per second. But for streaming media that you might put on your thumb drive, etc. and connect to this router, it works perfectly. I did load some media like movies, etc. on this thumb drive and I was able to access them wirelessly on my WD TV. So that works. Now let me actually show you the admin interface of this router. And let's now access the admin panel of this router. And to do that, I have it on 192.168.1.1 and you just enter your password. And I would suggest that you change the password. Another thing to notice that do update the firmware if you're going to buy this router because the firmware that came default with the router was a little bit buggy, but with the latest firmware, it is very stable. And as you can see, I have uh, enabled the 2.4 gigahertz band as well as the 5 gigahertz band on my network and it's connected to my network. And uh, from here, you can enable the 2.4 gigahertz or the 5 gigahertz band. If you don't like to enable the 5 gigahertz band, you can just uncheck it. But I've enabled both the bands. Also, good thing is that it does support the guest network, as you can see. And you can select between the 2.4 gigahertz or the 5 gigahertz band. And you can also limit the number of guests that you want on your network. So it's pretty nice. And it does support all the encryption standards that TKPI or AES. So no problems regarding that. And it also has support for IPv6. I don't have IPv6, but uh, when it's there, this router does support that. So that's pretty good. And uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, it also has the USB drive. So you have further settings. As you can see, I'm connected a USB pen drive and you can enable sharing or FTP media to this one. And uh, you can just go to, and you can also create user accounts to give access to this thumb drive. So that is pretty nice and we have storage sharing and even we have the FTP server you can enable it or disable it and we also have the media server and this will be useful if you have DLNA devices and I did test this a lot I put a lot of what do you say content like movies music etc on the thumb drive and attached it to this router and then I was able to access it throughout my network with DLNA enabled devices so that also works pretty well so to sum it up I would say uh, the admin interface is fully functional and it does provide us a lot of options 
these routers are connected 24 by 7 so let's also look at the power consumption and as you can see it is consuming about 2.7 watts it goes also up to about 3 watts uh, when stressed and uh, I'm now going to connect the uh, USB pen drive to the USB port and that increases the power consumption to about 3.1 and when there was very heavy activity going on on the network it can go up to about 3.5 watts or so so even in terms of power consumption I would say this router does a decent job as you can see for the price this router does offer us a lot of features but what is really important about Wi-Fi routers is the actual performance of this router and I have been testing this router for about one odd month and for the past two weeks I was using this router as my primary router and for testing what I had done is I had enabled the 2.4 gigahertz span as well as the 5 gigahertz span and also as this router does support guest network so I also enabled that so three Wi-Fi networks were simultaneously broadcasting and for load testing I actually connected 12 Wi-Fi devices and six devices were connected to the primary 2.4 gigahertz band. Two devices were connected to the guest network and four other devices were connected to the Wi-Fi AC band that is on the 5 gigahertz network. And I'm happy to say that even with this 12 devices simultaneously working around and out of them two were a, a streaming media devices like Chromecast and my WDTV. Then also the router performed pretty well. And I did uh, test this router for continuously for about 10 odd days. And during the 10 odd days of testing, it did not exhibit any signs of overheating or I did not even experience any reboot. So even uh, with a lot of devices connected, this router did perform pretty well. Now when we talk about the Wi-Fi range, which is kind of very important, uh, there also I had some good news. Even on the 2.4 gigahertz band, the Wi-Fi range was actually pretty good. It's comparable to some of the high-end routers that cost almost four or five times the cost of this router even on the 5 gigahertz band the range was pretty decent but do remember that the 5 gigahertz wi-fi uh, range is not as good as the 2.4 gigahertz band that is again same with almost any wi-fi router generally 2.4 gigahertz will give you a better range compared to the 5 gigahertz band but as this router does support dual band that is both the 2.4 gigahertz as well as the 5 gigahertz band can work simultaneously i would suggest that if some of your devices do support the wi-fi ac band keep them on the 5 gigahertz band and rest of the devices on the 2.4 gigahertz band so overall i would say i'm pretty impressed with this router considering the price to performance ratio and in fact i was so happy with this router that i have started using this as my primary router again this product is available in india on in online stores like flipkart etc and if you're buying it from flipkart please use my link in the show notes it does help the channel and if you found this uh, video review helpful i'll appreciate if you can click the like button and also share this video with your friends thanks for watching this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video Thank you.